Hi, everyone. Um, let's see. So uh, <clears throat> just to get down to the physical <laughs> objects that we work with, uh, this is uh, what we're calling the Grassroots Mapping Kit. And it's a sub $100, um, you know, Home Depot style way to take aerial imagery. Uh, and I've been using it a lot of places, but most specifically, I've been using it in the, the Gulf of Mexico over the past few weeks to capture images of the oil spill, along with a local nonprofit in um, New Orleans called the Louisiana Bucket Brigade. Um, basically, uh, we get teams of volunteers. We take bags of this stuff, including a, a helium tank, a kite, a weather balloon, and cheap digital camera, and a lot of string, and we put it in the air, um, <clears throat> kind of like this. Uh, and uh, what, what, that, what that allows you to do is to take imagery of, uh, of the spill from thousands of feet in the air. We've actually reached uh, 4,000 foot as our, as our maximum altitude uh, with a balloon. Um, and the thing that's important about that, you know, you may have heard uh, about, you know, what people are calling the, the media blackout of the oil spill. There are strict overflight uh, regulations of the FAA. There's a, a lot of reasons why people can't get good imagery of the spill, but what we're able to do is um, take images of both the, the beaches, the coastlines, and actually to get out on boats uh, with uh, fishermen who are volunteering their time um, to take pictures, pictures like this. Uh, the color's not so good, but you can kind of see what we're talking about here. Pictures like this, this. Some of these are from uh, donated airplane flights, actually, but uh, most are from balloons. Um, and then actually the most important part is that we're stitching them into maps. So, you know, photogra photographic evidence is one thing, but we're actually producing tile sets, we're producing KML files, they're viewable in Google Earth, uh, in a wide variety of different software, uh, GIS uh, systems. And uh, uh, this is, uh, for example, one of our data sets uh, near the Chandelure Islands that's hit. You can see these kind of streaks of uh, oil, and uh, it's overlaid on existing uh, Google imagery. So you get a sense of, uh, you know, how you're able to look at before and after. But as you really start to get into the resolution here, you realize that uh, our data is uh, so much higher resolution. This is nine centimeter imagery, and you can see birds. Those are terns uh, up in the corner. Those are pelicans down at the bottom on the sandbar. Um, at the beginning, that was actually the boat from which the balloon was flying. People out in there in the boat um, holding onto the string. Uh, Camera takes a picture every five seconds, um, and then you get these really fantastically large maps. Uh, and the idea is to go in, and we're actually imaging a lot of sites both before and after. So we're getting there before oil hits, making a base map, going back to it at intervals of about a week. Um, and then the idea is to actually play these as a kind of an animation uh, to look at the uh, kind of before and after effects of the, the spill. That's the NASA imagery. Uh, it's from the MODIS sensor. And it's, uh, every pixel is one kilometer wide. Now, as we zoom in, you'll see that our entire map fits within a single pixel of that data because it's 10,000 times higher resolution. So, uh, it, you know, we can't compete on the sense that we can't image the entire Gulf of Mexico. But for certain really high priority sites, we can produce uh, imagery that is so detailed that you can count animals, you can count vegetation. Um, and uh, that's kind of what we're trying to do. Um, we get into this situation a lot where the, the underlying imagery is simply not high resolution enough to get any information. I mean, the Google imagery we're putting behind here is just simply not, it doesn't exist. Um, here's a, we're actually towing kites sometimes behind boats, which is a lot of fun. Um, and uh, each one of these little segments is a five, or sorry, 12 megapixel image, and we're able to do entire coastlines. This is at uh, Port Fouchon in uh, the Lafouche County, or Lafouche Parish. Uh, you can actually see, the string going down from the camera to the boat. We can remove that, and we do usually, but it's nice sometimes to see the, the physical connection between yourself in the picture down below and the camera above. And there's something that's kind of crazy when you think about um, the fact that we often have to go all the way into space to take pictures of things which are happening right next to us. Uh, and so the, the string is kind of symbolically important to me. Um, all this data is um, being put in the public domain. We're, we're public domaining everything. It's available at that address up there. Uh, the, you know, download the tile sets or the raw imagery is also available. There's a lot of it, um, many gigabytes of it. Publishing uh, guides on how to do this, although really the, the, the educational part of it happens on the ground where the Louisiana Bucket Brigade holds weekly training sessions for volunteers who are interested in mapping the, the, the spill. Uh, they inflate a balloon, put a camera on it, make you walk through all the steps, and then help you get set up with a group of volunteers and like a, an itinerary and kind of uh, plan. 
we've been on Kickstarter. We managed to raise about five thousand dollars over the past five days um, to buy more kits, pay for volunteers' gas, things like that. Um, but you know, it's a pretty small amount of money. But we're, what we're doing is not expensive, so it's it's actually we're overjoyed that we've raised that much. Um, so you should check that out. Uh, and uh, yeah, oh, the by the way, yesterday um, Goso, who's listed here. Uh, um, Gozo.com uh, chipped in uh, $3,600, which for us is a, quite a pretty big amount. That'll buy us a lot of grassroots mapping kits. Um, and I uh, wanted to thank them in specific. Um, but yeah, thank you to all of our sponsors and to the Louisiana Bucket Brigade, who's going out there every day. Kickstarter uh, link back up there, would you? It's not a link, but it's actually on the front page of Kickstarter. Okay, it's on so. the front page of Kickstarter. I think we just doubled uh, at least <laughs> yeah. how much money you're going to have in the next hour. Go. It's, it's really nice to see something that's not totally digital. It's a sort of, you know, you, you go from the broad, if I could change the world, down to here's one specific thing a bunch of people are doing with some bags of helium. And that's what we want to see multiplied a million times, but it's, it's nice to see a particular one that's so inspiring. It's simple technology, really clever concept. It's uh, can see a huge potential for it. I mean, are you kind of actively kind of putting together ca uh, packs and sending them out to sort of strategic places? Cause I and can to see schools. huge uses for it. Yeah, I mean, agriculturally and you know, militarily, it, it, this, there's a huge potential, um, especially in sort of developing world where you know, they wouldn't have access to satellites and things. Yeah, and actually, yeah. Uh, as to that point, uh, the reason uh, myself and all the other people involved originally developed the balloon mapping technology is for mapping urban slums in the outskirts of Lima, uh, because they need is a really huge demand for making maps of settlements to register for your land. So that's actually, and it was incidental that we had it ready when the oil spill happened. And and all the ecological damage all over the world too. Um, speaking as a nerd, this is very much like something out of a Cory Doctorow or a William Gibson novel. Gibson saying that the uh, street finds its own uses for technology. Uh, the next steps might involve getting out the word uh, on this in a bigger way. That uh, sounds like it's uh, an article in Boing Boing. And uh, what can we do to help you do that? Or Nick Bilton in the New York Times, who's mm -hmm. going to be up next. Boing Boing may have more uh, circulation in that audience. <laughs> hey. Hey, any other comments you want to add? I'll give you some money. I hope uh, other people do. So. Thank you. Right. I was just going to, Andrew just whispered to me, and I'm going to pass this along, that he, uh, his observation that this is the best example of, for all the people who are worried about Big Brother, uh, that we are Big Brother, yes. uh, that we can do this too. Um, little Brother, Little Brother. And, and I'm going to steal uh, 10 more seconds, and then we'll, we'll uh, close up and just say, uh, Jeff, I want to thank you. I don't know if you were here when we started yesterday, but we opened with this very frustrating image of the spill from uh, below, a mile below, and just, you know, that video which is transfixing us, but also wondered what anybody could do. So it's a really wonderful feeling to be able uh, to bring uh, you here to speak about this and show us exactly the type of thing that this community can do. So uh, uh, really, kudos, thank you, and thank you more much. power to you. Okay. Thank you.